great Appalachian mountains, God has anointed and raised up a man to preach the power of the cross of Jesus Christ, to bring healing to the hurting, hope to the downtrodden, deliverance to the captives, and salvation to all who will believe. Only the truth of God's Word, preached under the power of the Holy Spirit, can meet the need of man. Come into the sanctuary with us and be set free. so glad that you've tuned in today. This morning we have a message for America. We have a message for the church. And we have a message for every lost soul around the world. The answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have the answer for America today. We have the answer for a lost and a dying world. So we want you to turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Romans, chapter 1. We will upset some of you this morning. We will make some of you glad. But this message is for everyone. Saved, lost, religious, non-religious, it is the only answer, and that answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 15. Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 15. If you're able to, please stand for the reading of the word. We'll honor God's word this morning. Romans chapter 1, verse 15. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm incapable of delivering this message this morning without your help. And we pray, Lord, that you would give an attentive ear to each and every one at Set Free Ministries, each and every one, wherever you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, take this message across the airways. Lord, we pray, Father God, that lost souls could be saved, bondages can be broken, the church can be lifted up and drawn closer to you and not be ashamed to be called a Christian. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for everything. The Spirit of the Lord in accomplishments. For we ask it in that name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give him, uh, give him honor. Praise him for who he is this morning. He's God and beside him there is no other. We worship you and we magnify you this morning, God. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This old book that we know is the Holy Bible that I'm referring to, the King James Version, is under attack in America today as never before. The onslaught that the world is causing uh, many people's minds to be desensitized uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, by the media. Every time we turn around today, every time we turn the TV on... Uh, there, we see some homosexual K 
character uh, in a story. Uh, he's the hero or she's the hero of the story. Uh, and then we see some kind of so-called celebrity, whether they're, they're in the uh, uh, sports world or, or they're in Hollywood, uh, they're being exalted. In other words, uh, they're coming out. Uh, well, I want to say this morning, it's time uh, for the Christians uh, to come out of the closet and say, I'm not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to proclaim this morning to set free ministries uh, to West Virginia, to Kentucky, to Ohio, and wherever this message go, uh, set free ministries uh, is not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Many Christians have become so desensitized by this onslaught that we do not realize that the homosexual community is not going to stop before this becomes a crime in America to say that homosexuality is a sin. Let me say something before I go any further. I'm not a homophobe. I want to tell you this morning, this preacher loves you and God loves you. That's the reason he gave his son, the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary, that you could be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that you can be brought out if you're a drug addict, you can be brought out if you're an adulterer or an adulterer, you can be brought out if you're a homosexual. Bless God, if you want to go to heaven, you need to be saved. Amen. Amen. They'll not stop. I want to share something with you this morning, how America is falling apart. The Bible says in the beginning he created them male and female. That's the way God started it, and that's the way God's going to end it. But I want you to know <laughs> this morning uh, that now in New York City, uh, which is in America, <laughs> I think it is, uh, bless God, the great city of New York uh, now recognizes uh, 31 different gender identities uh, that they recognize uh, and uh, they're committed to protecting uh, the rights. It used to be uh, the homosexual movement. <laughs> then it was the gay movement. Uh, then it became the LBGTQ plus. Uh, let me give you just a few examples uh, of the New York City government uh, that they now recognize uh, these genders uh, and if you do not recognize them, you can be fined up to $250,000. Number one, you, when you, you fill out your application, you fill out your paperwork, what, what sex are you? Well, I'm a bi-gendered. I'm a cross-dresser. I'm a drag king. I'm a drag queen. I'm a femme queen. I'm a female to male. I'm an FT, FTM. I'm a gender bender. I'm a gender queer. I'm a male to female. I'm an MTF. I'm a non-op. I'm an HIJRA. I'm a pangender, a transsexual, transsexual. I'm a trans person. I'm a woman. I'm a man. I'm a butch. I'm two-spirit. I'm trans. I'm agender. I'm third sex. I'm gender fluid. I'm non-binary transgender. I'm an androgyne. I'm a gender gifted. I'm gender blender. I'm femme. I'm a person of the transgender experience. I'm ad... Oh my goodness. And Facebook has not only added from the 31, now they've got 72. Bless God, God said there's still only male and there's female. Bless God. Hallelujah to the Lord. But I want to tell you today that I come to you proudly that I'm a BB. I'm a, no, no, let me stop. Let me back up. I'm an S-U-B-A-B-B-B-W-G-H-G-F. What did you say, Randy? What in the world's that? I'm a straight, unashamed, born again, blood, blood, blood washed, child of the living God. Uh, who serves the only true God than his son, the Lamb of God, because that's the only way you can get into heaven. Hallelujah. You say, well, would you repeat that for me, Randy? I, I sure will. Bless God, I'm an S-U-B-A-B-B-B-W-H-G-F. I'm a straight, unashamed, born again, blood washed, blood bonds, Holy Ghost filled, child of the living God. Hallelujah, that's who I am. Glory be to God. But in the Old Testament, those who wanted to serve God 
are constantly seen crying out to him. Let me not be ashamed. They're praying, God, lift me above my sinful state. In the book of Psalms, chapter 25, verse 1 and 2, Unto, you, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift my soul. O oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Psalm 25, 19 and 20, Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Psalm 31, 16. 16 and 17 says, Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed. Hallelujah. If they was not being ashamed in the Old Testament, it's time the church today not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen right there. The people of God knew there was only way to remove this sense of shame before God, and that was by keeping all of his commandments. But they just couldn't do it. In the Mosaic law, those who committed the most heinous crimes were crucified. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verses 22 and 23, the Bible says, And if a man hath committed sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. The word tree there symbolizes the cross. Bless God, we've got to get back to the cross. The cross is the only answer. Amen. In the book of Psalm 119, verses 4 and see the Bible says thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently oh that my ways were direct, directed to thy statutes then shall I not be ashamed 11980 let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I not be ashamed 119 verse 16 and 17 uphold me according to thy word that I may live and let me not be ashamed hallelujah I want to proclaim this morning that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to say I'm a straight, unashamed, born again, blood, blood, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, child of the living God who loves God with all my heart, who was brought out of the bondage of sin, but now I'm on my way to heaven and everybody that's saved, born again, washed in the blood ought to be rejoicing that the blood has been shed that we can go to heaven. Hallelujah. Paul is saying here in verse 15 of our text, he said, So much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. Paul was at Corinth at the time when he wrote this letter. But Paul had a glory in his soul and a burden for a lost world. Paul's desire was to preach the gospel, to win the lost, and to tell others about Jesus. Well, bless God. As Paul said, I'm not ashamed, and I'm ready to go to Rome. I want to say this morning, I'm ready to preach the gospel to Cross Lanes, to Nitro, to Charleston, to, to all of West Virginia, to Kentucky, and to Ohio, and to Philadelphia, and Chicago, and Los Angeles, and Pennsylvania, Pensacola and Topeka and wherever God's going to take this message. All of the cities that we're going to now and God hadn't even begun to open up what he wants to do. Bless God. I'm not ashamed. I'm going to take the gospel to a lost and a dying world. You ought to be thankful this morning. You got a preacher that'll stand boldly on the word of God and proclaim that Jesus Christ is the only answer to a lost and a dying world. Bless God. It's not Hillary and it's not Donald. His name is Jesus. If we make Jesus the leader of this country, bless God, he can turn it around. But you still ought to vote. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Miami, Nags Head, Wichita, Fresno, Baltimore, as well as a host of others, we're reaching every single Sunday. And many times during, during the week also. But Rome at that time was the center of the world. When Paul spoke of preaching the gospel, he was primarily speaking of preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. He said, for Christ sent me not to baptize, 
but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, uh, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17. He knew that the intelligentsia, he knew that the philosophers of that day in Rome would smirk at such a message the same way they're smirking at Randy Carter today. But bless God, they'll know. One day they're going to know. Either they're going to be thankful when they get to heaven or they're going to regret it when they get to hell. But I can tell you on the authority of God's word, Today, I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. He not only knew that some of them would laugh at him like they're laughing at us today, but some of them would accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. You know, men do not enjoy being ridiculed. I didn't enjoy being ridiculed. But bless God, it's not really being ridiculed when somebody tells you the truth. They're trying to help you. And the preaching of the cross does bring ridicule. That's why many preachers today, shame on you preachers uh, that won't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're preaching a motivational message, uh, telling everybody how good they are. Bless God, this book says there's none good. No, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every man needs to be born again. Jesus said ye must be born again. And if you're a preacher and you're not preaching that, get out of the pulpit. You're ashamed. Of the gospel. Amen. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. The Bible says, being made a curse for us. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul knew of the pride. Man, I watch CNN News and MSNBC. Shame on me. I ought to, I'm backslidden when I turned it on that channel. Uh, Fox News. And they smirk and they laugh at people of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But bless God, as we taught last week in Proverbs chapter 1, we'll be in Proverbs chapter 2 tonight. There'll come a day that God will laugh at their calamity. God loves you now. He's merciful. But there's coming a day if you reject his son and the gift that he paid for you on Calvary's cross, he'll laugh at your calamity one of these days. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which believe it is the power of God. The world may laugh that it's foolish, just like they laughed at Paul in that day, but bless God, it doesn't change. This word is settled forever. It's the power of God. I know one day when I was at Charleston General Hospital, I'd been smoking dope there in the hospital. Shame on me. Breaking the law, not only a, 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 a man's law, I was breaking the hospital law, but bless God, wasn't that too much uh, after that? That afternoon, a good old Baptist preacher come and tell me uh, the Romans rode to heaven, uh, that, if I would be, uh, that if I would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I could be saved. Uh, bless God, you know what? Uh, I believe what he said, uh, that the book said there's none righteous, uh, no, not one for all sin, and come short of the glory of God, uh, and that the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God was eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord that God commended his love toward us and that while we was yet sinners Christ died for us and if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead I'd be saved and you know what I believe that and I confess that and it changed my life and made me a new creature in Christ Jesus I'm saved and I'm not ashamed of it hallelujah it'll change your life amen I want to quote from the book, And Sarah Saul by Francis Swaggart. She said in that book, Mankind cannot receive the love of God without willingly submitting to his order and authority by the way of the cross. Let me say that again. Mankind cannot receive the love of God without willingly submitting to his order and authority by the way of the cross. The cross in the New Testament is a, shame, is a sign of shame and humiliation, as well as God's wisdom revealed through it. Rome used it not only as an instrument of torture and execution, but also a shameful pillory reserved for the worst 
and the lowest. Do you know what Jesus did? He took the punishment for the lowest and the cruelest, hellish, sinful man could be. He did it for you. It doesn't matter if you've been bound by drugs, if you committed murder, if you're in prison this morning. It doesn't matter if you're a homosexual. It doesn't matter if you're a liar. You're a gossiper. You know a gossiper is just as bad. It's sin. You ought not be gossiping. Get off that Facebook. Get off that text. Get off that telephone. Get out of that garage and start quit gossiping about somebody. Get on your knees and call out to God. Amen. But it was a torture and execution. Shameful. But the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12 and 2, he endured the cross despising the shame. Oh, he took my shame. Amen. Crucifixion was the most used form of execution in the Roman world of that day. However, it was reserved for those who were that a Roman citizen could not be crucified. Its form of death was so gruesome and terrible that no Roman citizen was ever subjected to its torture and humiliation. That's why it says that Peter, like Jesus, was crucified, but Paul had his head cut off because you could not crucify a Roman, and Paul was also a Roman. He was not only a Jew, but his ancestry was Romans. That's why he appealed to go to Rome. But in the New Testament, it's entirely different. We're not saved through our own efforts, as those Old Testament people were saying, Lord, help me. I don't want to be ashamed. Help me to keep your law. We are not saved through our own efforts. We do not have to deal with a guilt problem of our own. The Holy Ghost in us helps us to live victorious in every situation in our life. Amen. Romans chapter 5. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patient experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. (laughs) Hallelujah. I may be going through some stuff. I may be going through some trials. I may be going through some tribulations. But I still got hope. And because I got hope, I'm not ashamed. I know he's going to bring me through. (laughs) Hallelujah. I just feel like something good is going to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. In the book of Romans chapter 2. 10 and verse 11 the Bible says for the scripture says whosoever believeth on him uh, shall not be ashamed. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says study uh, to show thyself approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 1 verse 12 and 14 for which cause I also suffer these things nevertheless I'm not ashamed for I know whom I believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep uh, that which I have committed unto him against that day hallelujah to the Lamb of God I'm not ashamed is there anybody in set free this morning that's not ashamed to say I'm a child of the living God hallelujah I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and the salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek when we're not ashamed in our living in our trials in our prayer in our worship then he will not be ashamed of us. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 through 12 said, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. See, if you're not ashamed of him, he's not ashamed to call you brother. Amen. The only way you can stand before God, oh, listen to me. The only way you can stand before God unashamed, both now and in eternity, is to have a living relationship with him. I'm not ashamed i got a relationship with him. I'm not ashamed that I'm a S-U-B-A-B-B-B W-H-G-F. Bless God, I'm a straight, unashamed, born again, blood bought, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, child of the Old only true God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is anybody in here with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
1 John chapter 2, verse 28, the Bible says, And now, little children, uh, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Bless God, I'm glad I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm glad, uh, Bless God, I'm glad that I know every time I stood behind uh, this pulpit and every time I pointed my finger at that crowd, uh, whoever you are watching me, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, it's the gospel of Jesus. Jesus Christ uh, that will set you free. Amen. <laughs> I read a story of a young girl who went to church in a powerful revival and got saved. And that afternoon she was running through the house singing and dancing just full of joy. And when her grandfather stopped her and said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You just joined the church and you're singing and dancing on the Lord's Day. And I'm glad I'm not in law anymore, ain't you? She was crushed by her grandfather's attitude. So she went out by the barn and climbed up on the corral fence and looked at the old mule that was standing there. He had a, you know how mules are, had a sad, droopy face and his eyes were all bleary. She reached over and patted the old mule sympathetically and said, Don't cry, old mule. I guess you've got the same kind of religion as Grandpa. <laughs> Isn't that a shame? Bless God. I'm glad I don't have religion. I'm glad I got salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Religion will kill a dead man. Religious music will kill a dead man in a graveyard at midnight. Hallelujah. I want some music that will liven me up. Give me some faith. Give me some, give me some joy down in my soul. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. What a testimony Paul had. I'm not ashamed. Bless God. you got to realize where he was going. He was going. He was wanting to go to Rome, and he'd already preached in a lot of the other cities. And bless God, they made fun. The philosophy of that world, that was a fable. Who in the world would want to follow an old Jewish carpenter that was crucified on a cross, the worst form of death? Who would want to do that? But bless God, Paul, stand up boldly and proudly and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, and we ought not be ashamed. Amen? That's why I'm on TV this morning. It would be a whole lot easier not to be on TV, but I care about a lost and a dying world. I care about souls that preachers are lying to today saying you don't have to come out of that lifestyle you don't have to quit your drugs you don't have to quit your drinking God will take you to heaven anyway that's a lie out of hell Jesus said you must be born again and when you're born again you'll leave that old way of life I am not ashamed of the gospel are you ashamed of the gospel if you believe in your heart that this preacher is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ you see the address on the screen. I want you to mark it right now. Send me one dollar. Each and every one of you that's not ashamed of the gospel, send me one dollar that we can continue to bring the truth to a lost and a dying world. God bless you. of West Virginia and the great Appalachian Mountains, God has anointed and raised up a man to preach the power of the cross of Jesus Christ, to bring healing to the hurting, hope to the downtrodden, deliverance to the captives, and salvation to all who will believe. Only the truth of God's Word, preached under the power of the Holy Spirit, can meet the need of man. Come into the sanctuary with us and be set free. so glad that you've tuned in today 
This morning we have a message for America. We have a message for the church. And we have a message for every lost soul around the world. The answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have the answer for America today. We have the answer for a lost and a dying world. So we want you to turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Romans, chapter 1. We will upset some of you this morning. We will make some of you glad. But this message is for everyone. Saved, lost, religious, non-religious. It is the only answer, and that answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 15. Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 15. If you're able to, please stand for the reading of the word. We'll honor God's word this morning. Romans chapter 1, verse 15. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm incapable of delivering this message this morning without your help. We pray, Lord, that you would give an attentive ear to each and every one at Set Free Ministries, each and every one, wherever you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, take this message across the airways. Lord, we pray, Father God, that lost souls could be saved, bondages can be broken, the church can be lifted up and drawn closer to you and not be ashamed to be called a Christian. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for everything. The Spirit of the Lord in accomplishments. For we ask it in that name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give him, uh, give him honor. Praise him for who he is this morning. He's God and beside him there is no other. We worship you and we magnify you this morning, God. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This old book that we know is the Holy Bible that I'm referring to, the King James Version, is under attack in America today as never before. The onslaught that the world is causing uh, many people's minds to be desensitized uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, by the media. Every time we turn around today, every time we turn the TV on, uh, there we see some homosexual character uh, in a story. Uh, uh, he's the hero or she's the hero of the story. Uh, and then we see some kind of so-called celebrity, whether they're, they're in the uh, uh, sports world or, or they're in Hollywood, uh, they're being exalted. In other words, uh, they're coming out. Uh, well, I want to say this morning, it's time uh, for the Christians uh, to come out of the closet and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to proclaim this morning to set free ministries uh, to West Virginia, to Kentucky, to Ohio, and wherever this message go, uh, set free ministries uh, is not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Many Christians have become so desensitized by this onslaught that we do not realize that the homosexual community is not going to stop before this becomes a crime in America to say that homosexuality is a sin. Let me say something before I go any further. I'm not a homophobe. I want to tell you this morning, this preacher loves you and God loves you. That's the reason he gave his son, the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary, that you can be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that you can be brought out if you're a drug addict. You can be brought out if you're an adulterer or an adulterer. You can be brought out if you're a homosexual. Bless God, if you want to go to heaven, you need to be saved. Amen. Amen. They'll not stop. I want to share something with you this morning, how America is falling apart. The Bible says in the beginning he created them male and female. That's the way God started it, and that's the way God's going to end it. But I want you to know (laughs) this morning uh, that now in New York City, uh, which is in America, (laughs) I think it is, uh, bless God, the great city of New York uh, now recognizes uh, 31 different gender identities uh, that they recognize uh, and uh, they're committed to protecting uh, the rights. It used to be uh, the homosexual movement. (laughs) Then it was the gay movement. uh, Then it became the LBGTQ plus. Uh, Let me give you just a few examples uh, of the New York City government uh, that they now recognize uh, these genders uh, and if you do not recognize them, you can be fined up to $250,000 dollars. Uh, number one, uh, you, when you, uh, you fill out your application, you fill out your paperwork, uh, what, what sex are you? Well, I'm a bi-gendered. Uh, I'm a cross-dresser. Uh, I'm a drag king. Uh, I'm a drag queen. Uh, I'm a femme queen. Uh, I'm a female to male. Uh, I'm an FT, FTM. Uh, I'm a gender bender. Uh, I'm a gender queer. Uh, I'm a male to female. Uh, I'm an MTF. Uh, I'm a non-op. Uh, I'm an 